Still under caution. Jimmy Spencer was our leader. However, he has come in for a pit stop. The hood is up on the four car. Rick Mast is just ahead of Jimmy Spencer going down pit road, and hopefully we'll be back to green here shortly. And we see Rick Mast has also made another pit stop. And Jerry Punch, what are they doing to the four car? About everything you can do possibly on pit road, Benny. They have changed the spark plug wires. They've changed the ignition. They just now took the breather off, and that's uh, Tony Glover, Rod Pittman, and the crew. They just changed the carburetor. They're running on seven cylinders. We, we documented that earlier, about 7,000 RPMs. They just now finally changed the carburetor. Their thinking is that if it doesn't fire this time and run on eight, it may be a broken valve spring, which, which would not be good news at all for Sterling Marlin. Well, it's still misting rain down here on pit road, but let's check in with John Curtis. John? Well, Darrell Walter was in and just talked, just got here uh, from the garage area, Jerry, and he uh, came in and made a minor adjustment. I was in the garage area checking out the radar, and uh, as you see, the skies are starting to lighten up right now, and uh, according to the radar, we don't have any rain in the area, so let's go with that officially, guys. No rain in the area, nothing behind us. I think we're going to be okay. Tell that to the drivers and to their windshields that show sprinkles. Nevertheless, it has stopped for the moment, and here we go once again. The green is back out, and we are racing at Michigan. Michigan International. The 41 car of Nemechek is on the tail end of the lead lap. The leader of the race is Bill Elliott. Yes, we saw Nemechek make an unscheduled pit stop and change four tires, which did get him a lap down. Now, he and Harry Gant would do well to get in single file, because when they run side by side, they can now Gant gets out in front of him like that. Bill Elliott is going to catch him in a hurry. He is the leader of the race. Gant is big on that down as well. They can tail end of the lead lap now. And you wonder why Jimmy Spencer stayed out there and lost all that track position. As I said, Spencer, there goes Elliott on the outside of Nemechek. Bobby Labonte coming on the inside of Nemechek. He's going to make a three wide and race Elliott to the first turn for the lead. Who do you think led that lap, Bobby? Ooh. You think it was Bobby Labonte that led that lap? I wasn't watching the starting line, to be honest with you. I was more interested in whether Labonte was going to get through this area. He did, but now Jeff Gordon challenges him on the outside for second spot. There's Rusty Wallace on the inside. Remember that Miller Genuine Draft Ford. We saw a lot of muscle from that car early on. There's another car had a lot of muscle. That's seven car, Jeff Bodine. There's Elliott with the lead, Bobby Labonte in second, and Jeff Gordon in third. This is the 22nd Michigan race that Elliott has led in 34 races. Look at the battles back here. Man. There's Rudd, Ted Musgrave on the inside. Jeremy Mayfield right behind Ricky Rudd. Ted Musgrave in there. Get well wishes to Ernie Irwin on the dashboard of that car on the right. There's Jeff Purvis in the 02 car, the Kendall car in front of Musgrave. Ted is currently running in 27th position. Jeff Burton goes back out to the down pit road. His name is Ford. We did mention that Morgan Shepard is back in the race, right? Yep. Okay. He is not, doesn't seem to have that power or that speed right now. There's a race for third place. Bodine takes it away from Jeff Gordon, or he's trying to take it away. And Rusty Wallace will drop down to the low side and follow Jeff oh, Bodine. Crash. The crash is occurring in turn three. Pop Bodine. There's another car spinning up through there, and that car's going by. Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt, horse leader, and heavy damage to the Goodrich Chevrolet. Talk about things that happen during a season that uh, can have major impact on a championship, and this is a possibility here. Let's hope that Dale is okay and that Todd Bodine is all right. There is heavy damage to both of their cars in turn three. And both ends of Todd Bodine's car. You see the front right and the rear. Worst possible spot going in the corner when the car has top speed, probably. Here's top the Earnhardt and Todd Bodine are going to get together going in turn three. Todd Bodine goes up. They make contact, turns Bodine around. Earnhardt, meanwhile, spins and will go up and hit the wall. Boy, look at those roof flaps doing that job, yeah. keeping that car on the ground. The 75 car got off the ground after the initial impact, but it appears as if the uh, roof flaps did their work in that instance also. Dale Earnhardt is out of the car, and we're glad to see him okay. Safety workers up there in the third turn, and Todd Bodine also gets. 
gets out of his car. So both drivers okay. Another angle of this crash. Right, crash door. There's Earnhardt. Let's watch, see if we can watch Earnhardt and see where he makes contact with it. It's going to be the outside retaining wall. He goes up and makes contact with the front. Pretty significant contact, though. He didn't catch it. It breaks there because he'd been better off if the back end had went in there because the car would have been easier to fix than the front. He's gone over and looked at the right side of it to see what it looks like. Now put his helmet back in inside. The crash on lap number 56 of 200 here at Michigan International involving Todd Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. Bodine was also involved uh, to a certain extent. He has damage there on the right front of the car. And he was very close to his brother, Todd, and a bunch of cars running close together. We'll take a look at it again and see if we can see where he got involved. You can see Todd Bodine on the inside there. There's Brett right behind him in the green car. And Todd, I don't know if he thought he had Earnhardt cleared or what the situation, but they touch. Spins Todd spinning the wrong way, and Brett does indeed get into Earnhardt a little bit. That might be what spun Earnhardt down to the inside. I think you're exactly right, Ned. The contact between Brett Bodine and Earnhardt is what turned Earnhardt around there. We see the black car, the Goodwin Chevrolet, down in the grass. He goes back across the racetrack and pops that wall with a nose. And Jerry Punch, what did Earnhardt say on the radio to Richard Childress and the crew? Well, I'll tell you, the sign of a true champion. Earnhardt involved in the crash. Once the car came to a halt, he began giving instructions to the crew on how to fix it. He said, guys, we're going to need, here, take a list. He said, oil cooler. We're going to need uh, radiator. We're going to need suspension parts. We're going to need this, 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 this. Andy Petrie and the crew began running back to the truck to collect those parts before the car has even arrived back here in the garage area. Earnhardt directing the re resurrection or reconstruction of his car before the car even gets here. In fact, he had to climb in the ambulance. NASCAR mandates that when you're involved in an incident, you must go to the care center and be checked out. He will go there and come out very shortly. Well, Jerry, Dale Earnhardt was very proud in the garage area this morning. His son, Dale Jr., won his first feature race last night, a late model stock car race in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And congratulations to him, but his father's fate is not quite as good here this afternoon. Well, earlier today, we had some uh, excitement on the backstretch. There's the Mayflower truck pack uh, parked behind the backstretch. And you can see that the haulers are positioned down here in the garage area. And the drivers, the drivers of these transporters are involved in competition themselves in the Mayflower Challenge. It was round three of the Truckers Challenge here today, and the final was going to be held in Darlington September the 3rd. This was on the backstretch early this morning here at Michigan. There we see the car, the trucks go, I said the cars, the trucks going through a course, and they time these trucks. They also knock off points if they run over these pylons. And there we see that truck is stopped. The, the brakes locked up on Mike Culberson's car, truck, I mean, calling the car a truck. <laughs> he was last year the 1993 Mayflower champion. This time, my hand hit the hand valve. His hand hit the hand valve inside the truck, and you can see why they call him grumpy. And there's this is Rod uh, Pickler, right? And didn't he used to drive your hauler? In 1978, as grumpy watches on. Rod Picker ends his run. He puts his hat back on the right way. He's battling for the points lead. The points leader is Tom McCrimmon. What do you think? Uh, not bad. Felt pretty good. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Felt pretty good. But watch this performance. This was just an outstanding drive. This is Craig Bowes. He drives the Winston Select scoreboard that goes to each and every race. He takes his truck and trailer through these pylons against the clock. You think there isn't skill involved in this? I'll guarantee there is. There's Pickler who's saying, oh boy, looks like my, <laughs> my challenger is doing extremely well, as he did. Look at him bring this big hauler through these pylons. And again, each time they hit one, they will dis they will penalize them seconds for contact with a pylon. And Greg brings the old truck to a stop. And then they went to the effort of tabulating the points for uh, the Mayflower Challenge. As Craig completes his run, he's pretty happy. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> they tabulate the points and we've got a great battle going to the final round at Darlington September 3rd but the winner today was Craig Bowes $1,500 check and our
congratulations. And a trophy. Out of Craig. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Again, we'll be around for the final September 3rd at Darlington in the Mayflower Challenge. So we will uh, wait for that and the $25,000 check that goes along for the winner. That's pretty serious money. Not bad at all. And besides that, it just gives uh, the truck drivers an opportunity to show their skills. Here's John Kearney. Jeff Bodine out running in the fourth position. He led the early por portions of this race. Has been talking on the radio with his crew chief, Paul Andrews, and also with crewman Danny Glad. They're discussing a possible tire problem. He thought he may have a tire going down, or he might have picked up something on the tire, because right before the last caution period, when they'd just gone back to green, he felt a vibration in the car. He wanted to come in and pit, but as we've seen a couple of accidents a little further back in the pack, Jeff didn't want to come in and pit and get sent to the back of the pack where he could be caught up in a wreck. Instead, he's going to go out and as soon as we start green, if he finds out he does indeed have a problem, he'll pit for right side tires only. Well, Dale Earnhardt has come out of the infield care center and Jerry Punch is standing by with him. Dale, you walked out of the care center, obviously okay. What happened up there? Well, Todd and I came off the corner and he's under me and I drive down a We was close together trying to draft back, you know, to buy him down the straightaway and we got together. When we got together, his car sort of pitched to the right and I tried to get away, but I couldn't, and then we was together more, and it spun him to the outside, and I spin, and I started the inside, and I hit, somebody hit me from the rear and spun me to the inside, so came back up and hit the wall. I was lucky. He's okay, and we've talked, so we'll hope that everything's okay. We just wish, wish Ernie the best. His thoughts are Ernie. Dale, at the beginning of the race, the car didn't want to come up to speed. Was there a problem? Well, it, it, uh, well, it, something was wrong front end, and we, we worked on it, and uh, it was, you know, I thought it was going to be a little better, and I don't know. Dale Earnhardt very frustrated. They bring the car. The car has just now reached the garage area, and they are back in the car around. The crew has everything laid out here. They have oil lines. They have a torch already lit, ready to go. They have an entire front end assembly and suspension. The right front of the car heavily damaged. Dale Earnhardt likes to get involved. He doesn't like to get involved, but he will get involved usually in the reconstruction of this car. He stands behind the car. And take a look at this crew. Like ants at a picnic, they begin sawing and descending on this Chevrolet Lumina as we go back to green flag race. I have a feeling that he's going to get back out on the racetrack because the last time he DNF'd because of an accident was back in 1986. Right. Read this out. What, 1986? 86. There's Joe Nemechek, the yellow car on the inside, the 90 discount muffler car. He's racing Bill Elliott, our leader, trying to get that lap back. And that's what I saw the He came in, put on some fresh tires, and he during that caution flag. Thought it might give him what he needed, but he didn't want to be able to do it right now. A couple of cars that were involved in the very first crash have gone back out. Bill Parsons and Dale Jarrett, but they're about 50 some odd left down. Now the scramble for position off the corner. Bobby Labonte to the inside of Bill Elliott. And it's Rusty Wallace trailing this foursome here. Three wide into one. That's Jeff Bodine down on the bottom of the racetrack. He comes up and has second position from Jeff Gordon. And Jerry punches with Todd Bodine. As you heard Dale Earnhardt say, Todd is okay physically. Todd obviously disappointed. Uh, what happened up there? Well, I just one of them racing deals. Uh, you know, he was trying to stay tucked up tight on my quarter panel to keep the draft, and and we just the car moved around a little bit, and he, I don't know if he got over. I went up, whatever. We got together. They turned me up in front of him. I turned left as hard as I could, and he tried to turn away from me. But when that happens, it just it sucks you right together. There's nothing he can do. It's just one of them racing deals. You had a couple of contacts with the wall early on, a little brushing uh, with the wall. Did you have a problem with the car? I'm sorry, Jerry, I didn't catch you. The car was the car was handled decent. We were biding our time. It wasn't perfect. We made a couple adjustments on that stop, and it got better. And, in fact, that's why I could get under Dale there. He made it bobbled a little bit, and I got under him. But, you know, it's tough. Factory stores, Adidas Ford, and I'll call it a day. Yeah, they'll call it a day here. Of course, tough break for the Butch Block Motor Sports team. Bob. All right, thank you, Jerry. We're riding inside with Mark Martin. Jeff Bodine has reassumed command of this race. In fact, he is pulling away as the others behind him battle side by side for position. Right behind him are uh, Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace, and then Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon are wheel to wheel. And while they race the way they've been racing with you left, that'll get give Jeff Bodine an opportunity to move away. And apparently that vibration or whatever he felt that John Turner talked about, maybe he's not bothering him right now that he's uh, able to pull away with it. Kyle Petty, who took the provisional. Yeah, he did. Sure did. Yep. We see him up racing for one position. Well, let's check 
here. He's racing for 11th, it looks like. Wow, pretty good run. Yep. Currently, oh, he's 12th. Okay, he's in 12th position. Started 39th. And Ken Schrader is in 10th position. He started back in 20th, and that's the highest that he has been all day. I talked to Kyle in the driver's meeting this morning, and he said he had no idea what to expect. He'd only had four laps on the racetrack and didn't get to re-qualify yesterday after a four qualifying effort on Friday to go an engine just before qualifying, second round qualifying yesterday. So he uh, didn't get any practice or didn't get to qualify. Then it rained the qualifying out for the, I mean, the practice out for the second round for the late yesterday. So he didn't have much track time. Looks like that Ward Burton is on the move again. The Hardy's car, once again, he was way up high at coming off turn four. The car close to scraping the wall. Closing in on the back of Kenny Strader. There is John Andretti, who started from the outside of the front row, of course, and Rusty Wallace. Something wrong with Bill Elliott. He is off the pace down the back straightaway, slow down the back straightaway for the Budweiser Ford. He has, maybe he just got off the gas. What you, he's back and forth trying to feel what's wrong with the car, looks like. Seven-time winner here in Michigan. He's won the June race four times and this August race three times. Most recently, he won this race in 87. He might have just got high coming off the turn two and had to get out of the gas. That is a possibility because it looks like his car is up to speed now. But he's fallen back to fifth spot. And meanwhile, look, Rusty Wallace has caught Jeff Bodine. You know, Jeff Bodine was complaining about a vibration a moment ago and, and thought, thinking about a pit stop. At some race this year, they are talking about the Hoosier tires and talking about the buildup and what a concern it was, and it was making the car vibrate. Could it be they're having some more problems with that today? I think that was uh, Jeff's complaint last weekend at Watkins Glen, that the tires just accumulated so much buildup that he couldn't handle it. Jeff Bodine leads over Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Mark Martin as we are 68 laps into the 200 lap Goodrich 400. Well, Speedway for the GM Goodrich 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. And we're showing you a Bram Field summary where everybody was running just a lap ago. You forgot about Wayne and Kay, our very special guest in the booth today, bringing you this telecast. They're doing a great job, aren't they? They are, huh? <laughs> Said a word. Like I told you. <laughs> They want Rusty Wallace is strong today. Yes, he is. But Jeff has also been very strong. And Jeff Bodine is really good for about 15, 10, 15 laps after a restart. Dale Earnhardt 32nd at the moment as the laps continue to click off as his car is being repaired because of an accident that he was involved in with Todd Bodine. Now, the seven car of Jeff Bodine was reported to have a vibration a while ago. Jerry, who is with Paul Andrews, so what's the story now? Well, let's ask Paul. Paul, the report is a vibration in the car. What's the problem? Well, we think it's just a wheel balance problem. We had a set like this in practice the other day. It kind of quits at the end of the straightaway, so we're hoping that's what it is. So no chance it's build up. It just happened with this latest set of tires? No, I don't think so. The build up on the last set of tires looked really good. I don't think there's a problem like that. So possibly a balance problem, a vibration that seems now to quit about halfway down the straightaway. That's why Jeff's able to hang on to his lead, at least for the time being. Yeah, he is hanging on by a couple of car lengths over Rusty Wallace. But this is a different set of tires. Mm -hmm. Let's draw back a little bit and catch some more action in the pack. We zoom in on Rick Mast, the O2 of Jeff Purvis, and Brett Bodine. Jeff Purvis, of course, in the 02, and both Brett Bodine and the Rick Mascar made pit stops during this last caution, so they were at the tail end of those on the lead lap. So they're making their way back to their pretty good at the front, and that damage that Brett has in the right front, he clipped Earnhardt a little bit when Earnhardt came down in front of him after Earnhardt and Brett's brother Todd got together up there. And Jeff seems to be bothered Brett. And Jeff Burbick would love to have a good run today because Country Time is sponsored that for the limited schedule he runs with James Finch and now they will not be back next year. So if you'd like to have a good show and maybe give him a full-time Winston Cup ride in 1995. Back up front, it is still Jeff Bodine hanging on to the lead. And we will show you the Winston.
Boston Cup points leaders and where they started and where they are now. Dale Earnhardt started 11th. He's now 33rd, of course. Ernie Irvin still recuperating from his injury suffered yesterday here. Rusty Wallace started 7th. He's running 2nd. Mark Martin has moved up to 4th. And Ken Schrader has moved from 20th to 10th. It's just about 2 o'clock Eastern time. If you're just joining us, we welcome you to Michigan International Speedway where Jeff Bodine does hang on to the lead. And the report on Ernie Urban is that he had a comfortable night. However, uh, the condition essentially remains unchanged. He is still in critical condition in a hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the folks that, with Ernie Urban, I went by there last night after we left the racetrack and they wanted to thank a lot of folks. I mean, all the drivers and crews that came by last night just to tell them they were thinking of them. And Rick Hendrick, alone the plane, brought Ernie Urban's family up yesterday. The Starnes Aviation down in Charlotte brought up Robert Yates' crew. They were all there, just all banded together, holding hands and saying, let's get this guy well soon. Well, I dare say that there probably isn't a single person among the 100,000 gathered here today that did not think about Ernie at the start of the race and will continue to think about him until he's out of the hospital. Here's Dave Marcus, slow on the racetrack. Jerry, what's wrong? Well, well I was going to comment on the Ernie Irvin situation. I spoke to Robert Yates this morning at the hospital. Robert, of course, there with Kim and the family. And, and asked Robert, you know, I know it's a difficult time, but we had heard that they were considering even running the car. Robert said, you know, we had thoughts about possibly running the car. And if Ernie Irvin were to come out of this uh, last night and wake up and say, God, go race, they had planned on possibly putting Hut Strickland in that car, pulling a backup car out and racing it. But now Ernie's situation, he is uh, at a stable night, but is still basically uh, in intensive care, uh, unchanged. So uh, they decided to hold off and not make a decision on what they will do with that race team uh, until things improve with Ernie, until maybe Ernie can be a part of that decision. So that's where it stands right now with Robert Yates. We might mention Bill Elliott a moment ago. You saw him back off and lose uh, quite a few car licks. He still uh, now holds the fifth position, but apparently his first set of tires were very, very loose. This set of tires, he developed quite a push with, so he's going to back off and let the car free up and let the track come to him. He said, I have a, apparently he hasn't won seven times here by, uh, by running the car hard early on in the race. Very good point, and uh, John Kernan will have the update now on Dave Marcus. John? Bob, Dave Marcus slowly coming down pit road the last lap as he came by the flag stand. He dropped quickly off the pace. He now makes a hard left-hand turn into the garage area. He radioed in and told his crew an engine problem. Apparently, they've broken something in the engine. The oil pressure went to the bottom of the scale, so Dave Marcus' day looks to be over. Folks, while we've been talking about those other things, you've been seeing on your screen some great racing yep. back in the pack there. Those guys have really been going at it. And Kyle, finally, it looks like he's going to be able to get ahead of John Andretti. They've been racing for about 10 laps there, almost side by side. Yeah, that was great. 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th right here. And some of our reporters are saying they can't fix the three car. Uh-oh. Jerry Potts, can they fix it? Benny, unbelievable. You saw all the equipment they had back there in the garage area. We are now being told the frame was bent so badly they cannot fix the car, and they are through for the day. Unbelievable. What's going to... You talked about the point, Chase. Uh, it's a total scramble right now. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, we know that Ernie will probably not be back this season to gain any more points. We certainly hope he will be, but that apparently is pretty unlikely at this point. And now with Earnhardt out, the... Uh, interval between Dale and Rusty and Mark and Ken Schrader could very definitely close in here this afternoon. And we'll see Mark Martin just took over that third spot from Jeff Gordon. There's our leader on the left side of the screen. Jeff Bodine's leader, Rusty Wallace is second, and there's third place for Mark Martin. John Kernan, uh, 13 started on Hoosiers, and currently four of them are in the top 11. Well, Loy Allen had been running near the top 10. In fact, I think I had him at about eighth place. This is the tire that came off his right rear. Loy has just been in the pit. You can see we've got a blistering problem. Now, back in June, some of the Hoosier teams also experienced a blistering problem because they were running too high in air pressure. The Hoosier engineers have just come over and looked at this tire to check it out, and you better believe they'll be talking to the rest of the Hoosier teams, but we're seeing some significant blistering here on the right rear tire off of Loy Allen's car. Today's 
field consisted of 23 Fords, 14 Chevys, 4 Pontiacs, 28 were on the Goodyears, and 13 on Hoosier tires, including the pole sitter and the current leader on Hoosiers, Jeff Bodine. Riding with Jeremy Mayfield. And the Finger Hut Ford, this is Joe Yarbrough's car as he follows Ricky Rudd right underneath the start-finish line. He is in 20th position. Going down in turn one, there's Morgan Shepard on the inside to Sitco Ford. Remember, he was involved in that first lap crash. He's back out. He just He's trying to lip all, run all the laps he can. The last lap, he just passed Dale Earnhardt, went up into 33rd, dropped Dale Earnhardt back to 34th. More on the tire situation from John. Well, I just talked to one of the Hoosier engineers and asked him, in fact, if it was a pressure problem. He said yes. On the last stop, they'd gone to all the Hoosier teams and told them to drop their air pressure. Well, Loy Allen's team did not. They were five pounds over the recommended amount, and the Hoosier engineer told me that is the reason that it blistered. That was the same problem they had back in June. You wouldn't think that five pounds would have that much of a difference, but apparently it can. We will be back with more live coverage of the GM Goodwrench 400 from Michigan International in a moment. 100, there you see the top 15 from Jeff Bodine down to Greg Sachs. Greg Sachs, by the way, is in his 200th NASCAR Winston Cup event here this afternoon, currently in 15th spot. Rich Bickle just made an unscheduled pit stop a moment ago, and John Turner reports that he had some blistering problems on his car, so... There's second place Rusty Wallace as he continues to trail Jeff Bodine. Looks like he's gained a little bit on uh, Bodine then. Yeah, he's picked up a little bit here. Don't know if Bodine's coming back to him or if Rusty's picking up a little bit. They're still pulling away from Mark Martin just a little bit, who's running third. And Jeff Gordon there still not too far behind Mark Martin, of course. And right behind him him. is uh, the number four car of Sterling Marlin, who is off the pace. Michael Waltrip. And the Bobby Labonte and Ward Burton. Great run for Ward Burton. The Hardy's Chevrolet. And Kyle Petty. Now, we got to talk about Kyle Petty. Here the guys in the top ten and started back last. Man. Bobby mentioned Sterling Marlin, the Daytona 500 winner. He is seven laps behind. Joe Nemechek just in and out of the pits after making an unscheduled pit stop. And didn't mention Rich Bickle had been in. He's back in again. Bickle was running in the lead lap made his first unscheduled stop and back in again right now. Also Bobby. the, I'm sorry, the 41 car, the Monkey car, Joe Nemechek has been in the pits. He lost a lap early with an unscheduled stop. He just had another unscheduled stop. And the number five car is pitting. John Kernan, he's headed toward you. Well, Gary Dehart and his crew are waiting for Terry Labonte to pull in. This will be a scheduled pit stop for them. Not lap 90. It will be a four-tire change. I should add that whenever Joe Nemechek was in, he also has Hoosier tires, guys. He didn't have any blisters. And Labonte, the right side's already on. No chassis. Oh, yes, there is the chassis adjustment. He'd been complaining about a loose handling car. Might have chassis adjustment on the left rear. Left side's now going on. He's already full of fuel. Terry Labonte is down and away. About 20 and a half seconds for Terry Labonte as he rolls back out. And while we were watching that pit stop, Kyle Petty was able to pass Bobby Labonte and go into eighth position. Now, Rusty Wallace, we understand, should be in either this time or next time. There we see. We'll see if he back, comes down off the banking. No, he's going to run another lap. No, oh, he is it? In. He just comes <laughs> in in a hurry. <laughs> he sure does. Got to observe the speed limit, though, as he breaks to get down under the speed limit, and Jerry Punch is there to call the pit stop. They're reminding Rusty uh, that it is 65 miles per hour. They don't want to get a penalty here with a car running in the top five. Little genuine draft spot in our sport. Thunderbird, I just think, Blue. Little rookie will change all four tires. They don't plan any chassis adjustments. Rusty, very, very satisfied with the way the car is handling. He will get four tires. Remember the miscue a moment ago in the previous stop? Well, that left rear car comes off. Another left rear goes on. They have no problem with the lug nuts. Car is down and away. 17.2 seconds, great pit stop, and the 30 car is in Michael Walton. 
one would think that their uh, relatively poor performance on the last pit stop they had something to prove and they did here is john andretti also in the pits with the uh, pretty major Waltrip. yeah pretty major chassis adjustment on the right rear of the stp pontiac of john andretti now michael Waltrip gets the pins all pontiac serviced and he heads back out michael was running in the sixth position when he came in for that pit stop yep and john andretti is still sitting there now he drives away meanwhile mark martin Running in second spot now. Yep, he's moved up to second behind Jeff Bodine. There's some telemetry. Let's see how fast Mark Martin will run down the straightaway. And, and then once he changes the tires, we'll see if he picks up some speed.